Today we're taking on chapter 7, the second chapter dealing with protists, and we're going to be looking at what protists eat. We'll talk about protist nutrition, and then how specific protists, Euglena, Paramecia, Amoebia, and some other protozoa eat. So, let's start by looking at how we get nutrition. We get food, we buy it at the store, uh, we raise plants and animals for food, some people hunt for food, but there are various ways that we can get food. Then we cook that food for immediate consumption, or we store it for later. We put it in a freezer, we put it in a refrigerator, and we've got it for later use. Our bodies use food in a lot of different ways. Uh, use food to make energy, to make new cells, to make new tissues. The cells form tissues, uh, make new muscle, blood, skin, and other tissues so that we can continue functioning. And store extra for later, uh, which is a problem for some of us when we store more than we need and we start to put on weight. Different cells and different tissues influence the actions of the body. Uh, a lot of energy that we take in goes to fuel the brain. The brain takes up a lot of energy just to function, so the body needs to bring in a lot of fuel just for Different human tissues, the heart, the liver, the red blood cells, the brain, all of these are, are uh, fueled by the food that we take in and they use food materials to build up the tissue. What does the protist have? Protist has a much simpler kind of a situation. Um, they've got a nucleus, they've got a um, photoreceptor for the uh, euglena, they've got uh, different cilia, flagella, whatever, they really don't have a very complex sort of a situation. So their, their feeding is much less complex than ours. Protist makes DNA with its food, makes enzymes and other proteins so that the cell can function, makes materials for the cell membrane so that the protist doesn't just kind of leak out all over the place. Some make organelles for movement. The cilia, the flagella, these are all materials that uh, will move and um, will help the, the cell get around. Uh, it takes energy for movement. The cilia require energy, the flagella require energy, so the protist makes that energy. And all this is done in a single cell. This is what's so amazing. All of these things take place in what looks to us like a very simple cell. Well, what tells the cell what to do? Well, this is a big field of research right now as people try to figure out how does this little dinky cell that doesn't look like it has much in it know how to do all of these things and uh, uh, function? A very good question. Euglena eat um, primarily by making their own food. They have chloroplasts in them and they make their food by photosynthesis. Uh, you can see the many, many green chloroplasts in these euglena that are uh, the source of food. Now, they have a, a little thing in them called a stigma. And the stigma helps guide them to or from the sunlight. If the stigma has light on it, it they will swim towards the sunlight. If the stigma does not have light, they will swim away from the sunlight. So the stigma helps them find what uh, sunlight, where the sunlight is, and helps them get the sunlight so they can make their food. Now keep in mind that the sunlight plus carbon dioxide and water provide the energy and the materials to make the carbohydrates. The organism needs the carbohydrates for energy and it needs them for making other needed chemicals. Some euglena can bring in food from the outside when there is no sunlight available. Not all of them, but some of them both do both photosynthesis and can bring in food. Okay, euglena move towards moderate light. Uh, light can't be too bright. If it's very, very bright, they'll move away from it. Probably because very, very bright light means it's getting hotter and uh, high temperatures are really not too good for them. They don't grow in the dark, which is not surprising. If they need light for energy, they're not going to grow in the dark. And if they're stored in the dark for a while, the chloroplasts will lose their green color. 
because the sunlight isn't stimulating the chlorophyll in the chloroplast. But you put them back in the sunlight and they regain the color. The sunlight stimulates the chloroplasts and they're back healthy again. Now, paramecium have a different way of bringing in food. They have an oral groove that's kind of their mouth. And that has cilia in it and around it. And that's how they send food. The paramecium will swirl the surrounding water, see all the cilia moving around and getting the water moving, and little things, different um, organisms will be swirled around and some of them will move close enough to the oral groove so that they'll be swept in. And uh, they are brought into the cell and they go through the vacuole, the food vacuole, and get moved around. And the food vacuole travels through the cell um, using the material and eliminating waste. Now, paramecia primarily eat bacteria. The uh, paramecium can eat up to 50,000 bacteria a day. That's a lot of bacteria. And they also eat algae, yeast, and other protozoa. So they're not real selective in what they eat, but uh, they like to eat bacteria. Amoeba? Amoeba kind of limited in how things go. You know, amoeba don't move around. The Euglena and the Paramecia can swim around and track down food, but the amoeba kind of has to wait for it to come to them. But as something comes to them, they put out these pseudopods and they sort of sweep around the, uh, the food and bring it into the cell. And here's a micrograph of uh, amoeba eating a little piece of algae. You can see the pseudopods sweeping around it, going to trap it in and then close in and bring it into the cell. Didinium. Didinium is another type of uh, protist. Didinium uses sort of the <laughs> poison dart approach. Uh, the didinium has a little probe that it can inject toxic material to paralyze, in this case, paralyze the paramecium cilia. Now, if you paralyze the cilia, the paramecium can't move. So the didinium paralyzes it and, and then can bring it into its own tissues. Most didinium eat only paramecia. So that's their diet. Didinium can eat a paramecium in about a minute. And considering that the paramecium could be about as big as the didinium, that's that's pretty good. Uh, here's a picture of a didinium bringing a paramecium into. You can see the relative sizes. In fact, this case, the paramecium looks even bigger than the didinium. Podophora, another type of protist that uses um, the poison dart approach. They, the podophora injects the material to make the prey numb so they can't move, they can't swim away, and then they can bring it into the, the, the uh, cell itself. And prey are often released alive and they're kind of paralyzed, they really can't go anywhere. So, Here's a picture of a podophora capturing a microbe, a little microorganism, bacteria of some sort, and bringing it in with, you can see all the little probes, the little tentacles sticking out. Okay, what we talked about, euglena produce their food by the process of photosynthesis, so they need sunlight. Paramecia eat food by sweeping the food in with their cilia. They sweep it into the oral groove and then absorb it into the cell. Amoeba use pseudopods to capture food. The food kind of has to wander in and they sort of surround it. Didinium and podif podophora use tentacles and they inject the uh, toxic materials in the food and paralyze the food so that they can eat at leisure. So there's our conversation for chapter 7. Thank you for listening and paying attention.